Hey, welcome to Live from Dennis's House. Today we got the drive through condensed Reader's Digest Express 5-minute version. And we're going to be doing License to Ill by the Beastie Boys. The reason I picked this one, it's a masterpiece of course, but it was just uh, declared to be diamond status, which means it sold over 10 million copies. So uh, that's, that's some feat. So uh, we'll get back onto that. We'll talk about some things here. But uh, I just want to, I don't really have that many topics. I just want to talk about, you know, what happened during the week here. So this past weekend, uh, my band, the DeSelvers, we were lucky enough to play at the Skin Industry Tattoo Convention in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. That's where I got this cool shirt from. And that's where I got all these uh, cool tattoos from. Um, but uh, we all, the four of us, got into our RV and we drove down there for the weekend and <laughs> surprisingly four guys staying in an RV with no, without any running water is not as much fun as you would think it is and it's, it's not actually as bad as it sounds either but uh, you know we thought we were gonna have an RV hookup when we got there but we didn't so we didn't have a shower but luckily it was a beautiful place and we were right outside the casino so we could go in there and use the facilities whenever we wanted but there was no shower so uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun and we played really good it was a good time uh, you know they're very nice there and everything so uh, we had a really good time but you ever notice when you're going on a road trip that when you're just first starting out everybody yeah road trip Whoa! it's gonna be the best time ever <laughs> And that's quite different when you're coming home. Everybody's like, ah, oh, can't wait to get home. But, uh, yeah, we had a good time. And uh, the one thing I did notice when I was at the tattoo place, that all tattoo artists, like every other guy, looks exactly the same now. They have this new look, the hipster tattoo guy. So he's, uh, you know, they all got the same haircut. They got the big beard. They got these uh, really poindexter dark sun uh, reading glasses. Now that I'm describing this, the guy <laughs> looks like me, but no, I don't look like that. And they all have flannel shirts and skinny jeans, and it's just, it gets to be annoying. And like by the second, third day, I was ready to punch every single one that I saw right in the face. But, uh, you know, to each his own, I guess. So, uh, that's that. What else I want to talk about? I want to talk about that it is now goddamn spring, and it's still effing snowing, and I'm getting really annoyed with this. So F you, uh, Father Winter, Mother Nature, whoever the hell is in charge of this, F you. And a bigger F you to all you people who live in Florida and wherever else where it's nice and warm and sunny and you keep posting pictures saying, oh, look at my thermometer, it's 86. Oh, look at me in the pool. Well, F you, you sons of bitches. You'll get yours when it's uh, summertime and it's nice 85 here and it's 112 out there and you got bugs inside of birds flying around your head then we'll see all right the hell with you all right what else i want to talk about all right let's talk about the album here so this album came out in 1986 and it was a huge huge success influenced everybody in the whole thing that these three Jewish kids from New York, it was uh, MCA, Ad Rock, and Mike D. And uh, they first started out as a hardcore band. You know, they loved Black Flag, Bad Brains, all that kind of stuff. And then um, they hooked up with, uh, what's his name, Rick Rubin, the producer. And they put together, it was just pure genius, putting together hard rock with rap. And it just took off like wildfire. You know, you put those, as you just heard, they had the, the greatest drum riff of all time from Led Zeppelin on that song. And they have a lot of other heavy metal riffs going on. And it just took off. It took it, you know, because you had uh, Run DMC a little before this. But uh, they took it to one level. But they took, Beastie Boys took it to a whole nother level with this one. And, you know, it just, it had everything. And along with the uh, funny lyrics, the party atmosphere, it, it had everything. It made it accessible for white kids in the suburbs to like rap now. And they just took off like you wouldn't believe it. 
You know, <laughs> they did have, uh, you know, some good lyrics. It's like, who else has lyrics about Rod Carew and Abe Vigoda and Angel Dust? All in the same song. So, uh, that's something for everybody. So on here, it had the anthem, Fight for Your Right, which just took off. Everybody was playing that song in 86 and 87. And uh, No Sleep Till Brooklyn, which is my particular favorite. And uh, they just, they were touring with Run DMC, touring with Madonna, touring with everybody. They were a household name during that time. And then, uh, you know, it was just huge. And they were given a lot of respect as well that, you know, they weren't thought of as like a vanilla ice. They were legitimate. They're real deal. So, and they just, uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that for, without the Beastie Boys, rap could still be just an underground, inner city thing. They took it mainstream, that who knows. Without them, what would it, what would it be? What would rap be? We have no idea. So, uh, but luckily we had them. And um, I, I was actually lucky enough to see them back in their prime that uh, I saw them in concert, a small place in New York City. They all, they were playing with um, who was it? Ice T, Body Count, and the Henry Rollins band. So I can't remember who I was with or what year, but I believe it was like 1990 or something like that. So if anyone was there or was with me, uh, let me know. I'd like to know if I, that concert actually happened or I dreamed it or something. I don't know. But um, anyway, this was a great, great album giving it five stars they influenced the generation changed the world and they went on to a brilliant career and it got much more complicated music and sampling and uh you know and then unfortunately uh what's his name uh mca adam york he uh passed away in what 2011 12 i think yeah he died in 2012 and they vowed they would not keep the band going out of respect for him, and they were inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's something. So, uh, you know, it was great. Great, great album. Giving it five stars, no question. Oh, I didn't even smell the album, too. Let's check this out. Hmm, we know what that smells like. Stale beer and angel dust. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on here, a lot of pictures. I think that's a Queens that one was taken and um, what else on? oh that I want to give a shout out here that's a new thing I'm having on my show that any guest who come on my show get a lifetime of plugs so actually Beastie Boys before License to Ill came out they put out these two uh, EPs so this one was Cookie Puss Did anybody remember Cookie Puss but if you could see the label it's from Slip Disc Records where my friend Andy, Randy, Greg, and Mike Schutzman uh, worked and owned that place. And just the same as this, also from Slip Disc Records. And that was in Valley Stream, the best record store around. But now they run uh, vinyl record shows, and they're going to be having one Sunday, March 29th, in Littlefield. I'll put up the things for that. But other than that, what's going on? You know, I just want to say a shout-out, quick shout-out, that AJ Perro, the drummer from Twisted Sister, passed away. Andy Fraser, the guy from the band Free, passed away. A lot of people dying way too young here. And the inventor of L LSD, Albert Hoffman, died at 102 years old. So I guess that proves drugs are bad for you. Okay? He probably would have lived to 105 if he wasn't doing LSD all the time. So, yep, there you go. I, I, he has a more Led Zeppelin playing there. So go out, get some Beastie Boys albums, and that's it. Mojello out. See you guys next week.